Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. This is JCB Live, and this is Wine Style. Today, we're going to travel to Burgundy, and this is a very exciting moment for me. My heart vibrates because I'm going to be home. This is my cradle. This is where I was born, and I'm going to be with one of my closest friends in the world, Mr. Grégory Patria, who's been making the fabulous wines at the Boisset Winery for over 20 years. He doesn't look like it. He's very young, very attractive, very seductive, and his five senses are working like 20 senses. I'm going to call for his presence to make sure he's coming out of the Cathedral of Wine, the old convent of Burgundy, Grégoire! Grégoire! Et tu là, Grégoire? There he appears! Bonjour, <laughs> Grégory! How are you? Good. <laughs> I'm very excited to see you, as you could see. So nice to see you. So, dear friends, Grégory, We started really the renaissance of the J.C. Boisset Winery together in 2001. How many years does that make, Gregory? Yeah, that makes a long period, you know, Jean-Charles. We have decided to really re recreate this winery 20 years ago, close to, and uh, a very ambitious project from the beginning here. This has been the most exciting project, but I want to give the context Grégory was working at the famous Domaine Leroy in both Côte de Nuit, Côte de Beaune. He was managing the vineyards and following his philosophy of organic and dynamic farming. And obviously we knew each other. He came and we said, let's do it. We never looked back and it was 20 years ago. So Grégory, tell us where you are now because I could see some amazing cathedral type of structure. It's very impressive. So where we are now is the new winery that was achieved in 2080. So maybe, let's stay modest, but it's maybe the most spectacular winery of Burgundy. This um, unique project took five years to be achieved. So really a, a very, very strong project. As you can guess here, it's a dome with vineyard planted at the top. And here we are under the dome and you can guess behind me, this crazy winery here with a, a beautiful window. I don't like to say window, but Jean-Charles, maybe you can explain me about that, about the colors. Well, together, you know, we work according to the principle of energy, which is really, really important. And we've got to go back to it, but it's full of symbolism and it's full as well of ideas that come from under. So the magnetic energy that comes from the telluric forces, linked to the cosmos or the sky. So here, this is the idea that growth is the symbol for us of the leaf that gives birth then to the grapes. We start in the grounds in the very deep, then it gets warmer and warmer, gives birth and then the sky. Hence that beautiful blue horizon, you know, stained glass on top. So this is really the idea, this is over 12 meters tall, and this is really linking the evolution of the wine, which makes it very special. Now, Grégory, explain why the winery is oval, like a neck shape. Because here we have decided to work in a direction that is a little, a little bit unusual, a direction that is used for thousands of years to make, to build pyramids, temples, cathedrals. We worked in the direction that is bioclimatic, and following the principles of uh, geobiology. So that means geobiology, it's, we are using uh, the, as much wrong shapes as possible. We worked uh, with a famous geobiologue called Mr. Pratt. He's uh, an incredible man, renowned, renowned for that. And he told us, your worst wine will be the one that will be close to the angle of your wine. So in your winery, you must not add any angle. This is why in this winery here, All, everything is about wrong shapes, you know? So uh, there's no angle at all in this winery. And we use the proportion of the golden number. The golden number is, was, is used for 2000 years 
for Pyramid, as I said earlier, and it was important. Central America to all the things in Asia. I mean, the golden rule has been the rule of all time in, in historical architecture and back to modern architecture. We worked, uh, Grégory, as well, with a great architect, Frédéric Didier. Yeah, Frédéric Didier is the actual man managing Chateau de Versailles. De Versailles. So imagine this famous man in architecture in, is made a design of his winery. So at the beginning, was very impressed to do a winery uh, with this man. So it's really a, a unique association that we have done here. And um, explain, well, maybe we should start with a glass of wine. Because yes. many friends who are with us today have the wines with them. So I suggest we do reverse than what we do in the cellar. Do you want to start with the Chardonnay or the Pinot Noir? No, we, we can start with the Pinot Noir. That would be a good idea. With the Pinot Noir, which is called Les Ursulines, you know, and this is our entry level wine. So the most important wine of the winery here. I, I usually say the entry level wine is uh, the flagship of the, of, the, of the winery. So if the entry level wine is good, that means the top wine is not bad. So it's really, as a winemaker, the most important wine of the winery here. And it's called Les Ursulines because here we are living in a convent that was called Les Ursulines, where sisters we are living and they have been chased at the French Revolution in 1789. So there's a lot of history in the place where we are, we are now. So that was important to really give, give the name of the convent to our wine here. And it's amazing because they started the convent in 1640, so early 17th century, and here we are today building from what they started. And when we say the monks created Burgundy, it's very true, but as well, the sisters played a key role. And this is why, you know, we love men winemaker, woman winemaker. I think as a team, you with love, you make an amazing team. And this is very exciting to witness the role of women into the world of wine, and it has been there for a long time. Yes, absolutely, Rocha. You so want me to show how you show us how you open this wine because you do it in a very sexy way. <laughs> you know, uh, for most of the consumers, Krukap looks like things for cheap wines or untreatable wines. As a winemaker, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Skruka because Skruka preserves the freshness of the wine. You have more aging potential and you have no corked bottle. So as a winemaker, technically, this is really an interesting closure. And we are doing the promotion of this closure the last 17 years, Jean-Charles. And uh, the way I love to open it because things are, a lot of things in the wine business are about ceremonial. Yeah, and I think it's important to respect a kind of new ceremony with Fuka. Let me show you the way you open it here. So you just take the bottle this way, you crack it, you know, from the bottom, you, you turn it from the bottom, up, crack, and then you just up, like, roll yeah. it, and I it's done. It. <laughs> well, we've had a lot of practice together doing that, didn't we? Because how was it received 20 years ago when we launched this idea in 2003? How did people react? Yeah, so many, many, many other winemakers in Burgundy, which we who are very conservative, we did not travel, you know, in the world. For many people, it was a kind of provocation. And uh, it was everything but that for us, because it was, it's, it was more than an innovation. It's because we love our wine, and our wines have to be respected. When you bottle a, a wine that I've made, it has to be perfect. We know that with Coke, you can have a huge variations, but with Cookup, all the bottles look like the same, and they edge better than Coke. And explain everyone, how did we start? How did we get the idea to do screw cap? I, it was a pretty historical night. It was a kind of revelation that we had. We, we, I remember, Jean-Charles, we had the possibility to try together uh, 1964 screw cap Nuit Saint-Georges, imagine. Skukap is not born in, in New Zealand. Skukap is not born in Australia. Skukap is born in Burgundy, early 60s. Nobody, this, nobody knows this history, but a Frenchman called Michel Feuillard did the experience at the beginning of the 60s about Skukap. And uh, we had the, the, 
the incredible chance to try this wine in 2003. And the wines were absolutely spectacular, magnificent. So for me, it was a kind of, because everybody's, everybody says usually there's a lack, there's a lack of um, uh, feedback. You know, we, we have a lack of experience with Spookat. We have the experience about 40 years in the bottle with Spookat closure, and the wine was perfect. So it's uh, sometimes um, screw cap, it's irrational, you know, it's all about the perception that has nothing to do with the real quality of the wine. I so much agree with you. So why don't we taste? Let me try, let me have the glass. Yeah, because the your friends, this is the most complicated to do. And this is where you recognize an amazing, talented winemaker. It's not always making Grand Cru or Premier Cru, which happens to be very difficult too, but the most difficult, Gregory, isn't it to make the Burgundy Pinot Noir level of wine? Definitely. It's, I would say for a winemaker, it's easy to do a good Grand Cru because the terroir is already there. You don't need to work a lot to do a good thing, but to do an entry level wine with the vineyard that doesn't have um, have less good exposition, maybe less good soil and subsoil, you must work twice more hard, you know, to make something good. And this is, a, as a winemaker, this is much more challenging to make something good here. And in Burgundy, honestly, you can be disapp disappointed at the entry level. You need to go much more, you know, higher range to have a, a big pleasure and to have good qualities here. At Jean-Claude Boisset, we attach a big importance to make something good already at the bottom here. I love it. So explain how you made this wine, because uh, I think we're looking at the cellar behind you. So maybe we want to get closer and you could show the open top for manner and explain how you do it. Yeah, let, let's, let's have a look if we have uh, en enough signal. It's gorgeous. This is fabulous. Yeah, and, uh, you, you can guess here. We have 40, um, 54 small wooden dots here. Each, each tank, imagine, I don't know if you can guess, but there are, there are five tons big. The biggest that we have are five tons, but very, very, very small. So, and the small one in the middle, you can get, are, we make one ton of five barrels in this small tank here. So the idea is to vinify in wood because um, we love wood. It preserves a lot of, uh, the terroir expression is very, very good with wood. Really, it's a big, big, uh, a big impact in the winemaking process because uh, it preserves naturally well the uh, uh, temperatures of fermentation. So it takes a lot of space, but the inconvenient. But at Jean Claude Boisset, we are in, lucky enough to have space. So, but uh, imagine these tanks are 20 years old; they look like new. Well, that's because you maintain them so well. Yeah, but we try. But everything is made by hand. In order to slowly convert the sugar into alcohol, right? Yes. Sorry, I did not hear your question. Well, I was saying, maybe you explain just quickly the winemaking process of this Burgundy Pinot Noir because this is so great, so full. There's a lot of volume. There's a lot of aroma. There's a lot of expression. And there's a very good length. Yeah, the, the idea is to use gravity as much as possible because this is here, you see the, the, the passerelle here, the, the catwalk that you can guess here, it's to, to bring the grapes into the tank. You know, the more gravity you use in a winery, the best it is. If you crush it in the pump, you really destroy the quality of the wine. So it's very important to use as much gravity as possible. So we use gravity to put the grapes into the tank, but we use gravity as well to bottle. So here we don't pump at all the wines, but it's very, very important. You must, Pinot Noir is a very sensitive grape variety. The more you touch it, the more you lose. So it's very important to respect the integrity of, uh, of, the, of the grapes here. So we are, I, I usually say I'm a lazy winemaker here. So we don't use any yeast, everything is made in a very uh, non-interventionist non way of winemaking. That's right. So, Gregory, um, obviously, we've used, for all our friends, the golden rule and all the key proportion. This has been very important. And you can all see the X shape inside, which we believe favor 
the slow fermentation process and the completion of that first fermentation. So the cellar Grébori is below you, of course. Can we see it from above? Yes, through the, the cellar. Maybe you show us the crystal. Ah, you can have a look. Yeah, yeah, you can have a look. Oh. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, so dear friends, we're going to show you the crystal. Why do I have a piece of crystal? They are actually linked. So we do a lot of crystal energy as we planned the winery. We design it to be synergistically aligned. Very important. We just had the summer solstice two days ago. And the summer solstice is all about alignment as well. Stone Edge, Chinchen Itza, the Egyptian, of course, the Egyptian uh, uh, pyramids. So here you have a, a, a crystal at the middle, which is really linked to the cellar as well and some of the key magnetic points of the winery. We've used as well this pendulum to actually link the pieces of crystal and bringing a certain level of energy to the site. We call it the Bovis scale, which is a scale invented by Dr. Bovis to measure energy with your pendulum. And you can see that piece of crystal, I'm shivering just looking at it, and I'm having goosebumps of excitement because it generates to me, as I programmed it, a very high level of energy that brings, you know, each of the rooms from the grapes arrival, vinification, fermentation, aging, all together, all the way to the aging cellar as well. And you could see the vortex going around and the water goes around this beautiful piece of vortex that is aligned, obviously, to another fountain and a Pierre Amiral, which is obviously a solar symbol as well. So there was a lot of thinking in the conception of this winery, which uh, was exciting to do. And at the same time, Gregory, isn't it bringing amazing results to the wine? Yes, the, 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 the idea is to encourage as much, much as possible the energy. So uh, this is, as I said earlier, we don't use a lot of analogical products. So that's why it's important here that the wine has to be at the right place in the right environment. So if you encourage all this energy, you know, coming from the cosmos, coming from the, the soil as well, if you don't uh, blow all this energy, you can really encourage uh, much more uh, finesse, elegance, and quality in your wine. Yes, and, and you know, originally you were wondering when I first came with Mr. Pra. You remember at Domaine de la Rougerie, you said, what the hell is this guy doing? We're doing geobiology. Explain what he did for your daughter to uh, sleep better in your house. Yeah, no, no, this man has really, was really, has, uh, it's not easy to explain, but uh, because many people would not believe about that. It's a little bit esoteric, you know, but uh, this man was able to feel, you know, uh, the bad energies, let's say. And he was able to put all these energy away from the houses or the places. Uh, here, when they came at the winery, I remember there was plenty of bad energy here. And uh, he, he tried really to reinforce and to make it uh, the energy much higher than it was in the past. So it's, a, it's a, an, invisi an invisible work, but that is really much more than important. That is really unique. This is the first thing you have to do when you decide to do a, an, a wine activity somewhere. You must put away any kind of uh, pollution, I would say. And this is why I wanted for both of us to be together in full alignment, because behind me, you have a chandelier in crystal, two others in front of me, oak trees on each side. So I'm creating an octagonal shape in this house to bring and link the energies together, magnified and connected with the crystal. So the technique we've been using in terms of invisible architecture, invisible signals that we ultimately find in the wine is as well in a sense of place. And I think this is very important when we talk about the Boisset Winery 
17th century, 18, 19, 20, 21st century, we as well brought back the beginning of time because at the beginning of time, people were using a pendulum. At the beginning of time, people were already linking energy together with crystals. So we really came back to time to create time again and timeless energy towards the future. So that's what I'm very excited about in what we've created together. So now, Gregory, tell us about the next wine. Yes. At the Pinot now. What about the Chardonnay? And give us some thoughts about how you make those splendid Chardonnay. Because I, again, want to insist, oh, that beautiful individual you see is obviously the father of all the growers. This is St. Vincent. And this was a beautiful interpretation of St. Vincent. And we are in the Mother Superior area right now where she was running the convent from. Right below Gregory is in fact the cellar. All these beautiful wines that he's crafting are resting, you know, 15 meters under his feet. So it's an exceptional site, linking centuries, linking bioclimatism, linking energy from outside to inside, and obviously preserving this amazing environment that was created before us and magnified it for the 21st century onwards. So uh, the next one, the Chardonnay. Yes, the Bourgogne Chardonnay, Les Ursulines. So this is the, the brother of the Pinot Noir. So one more time, very important wine here. And we use exactly the same wine make wine making technique as any Merceau. You know, Merceau is the most well-known Chardonnay of Burgundy. So here we're doing exactly the same direction here. We're using only oak fermentation. Uh, we, are, we are using some bigger barrels, you know, in Burgundy, winemakers are classically using 228 liters here. We're using 450. The idea is to have less oak impact, more minerality, more purity, and less fatness, in fact. So we, we are really working in the we don't want to make big, bad, bad, uh, fat, buttery Chardonnay. The idea is to make white wines of Burgundy that has a clear uh, expression of uh, finesse and uh, elegance. That's right. So explain your oval style for the JC Boisset winery. Because we've defined that style together now 20 years ago, and you've been the guardian of the temple of the cathedral, and you've kept that style and improved it year after year. Define it for us. Yeah, so the, the idea is to let the terroir express himself as much as possible. Uh, if you feel the hand of the winemaker, that means I did a bad job. So 90% of any quality of each wine is made in the vineyard. You make only top wines with top grapes, you know? And uh, that's very important for us. If you, I usually say to, to laugh a little bit, uh, I'm a lazy winemaker, but it's true. I'm lazy because uh, I, we want to reach the perfect quality of grapes. So when you, when you have top quality of grapes, you don't need to work a lot in the, in the wine. And you have much more terroir expression. So that's very, very important. But uh, we, we, are, we, we are not people where you could say is, we don't make a classic style of burgundy. Here we, we make uh, maybe a new style of burgundy with less fatness, less oakiness, but more, more refined uh, character. Here. We don't do any batonnage. You know what is batonnage? When you remove the leaves of the barrel, you know, to obtain more fatness. Here we don't do it because we reserve that we have enough natural fatness in any of our wines here. But our wines, they spend minimum 12 months in oak. You know, that's very, very long. And this one spent 12 months, and all the other wines, Premier Cru, Grand Cru, they spend minimum two winters in the cellar. That, that means 18 months minimum. So that makes a long time before we put this wine on the market. So uh, a top wine has to spend a long time in the barrel before being uh, bottled. You must be patient. Exactly. We've got to be patient, which we hate to be, but you know the result is magnificent. Legally, maybe a little word on alcohol, power, and 
you know, how we do it in Burgundy, because often people have to think that a wine has to be high in alcohol, whereas a 12.5% wine can be very powerful and still just be 12.5%. Yeah, that's interesting in Burgundy because it's, it's a cool climate. You know? So that means a cool climate means you don't have, you know, the more sunny is your climate, the more sun you have, the less acidity you have and the higher alcohol that you have. In Burgundy, we are, I usually say to have some fun, you know, we have 10 months of bad weather, you know, and two months of good, and even some less. So this bad weather preserves the freshness and the low alcohol of the wine. So this is what we love in Burgundy. You see what maybe Burgundy is well looking at the moment by many wine lovers, because these wines are 12.5, 13. And when you drink a glass, you can drink a second one. You that's can right. drink a third one. And, and you're never drunk. That's, the, that's, a good, that's a good drug, trust me. Well, luckily, we both have two bottles each. So we should be <laughs> Jacob, we tell us yeah, and you know, it well in uh, the vineyard. Uh, in the vineyard, it is important. You know, I, 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 I started, I became a winemaker, but I was vineyard manager at the beginning. So I, st I started to do six years of total work in the working in the vineyard before going in the winery. So that was important for me to understand how it works. And it's starting from the vineyard. And the idea here is to use organic farming, biodynamic farming, you know, if you use pesticides, if you use pesticides, it's really destroy all the work you are doing, all the life that you have in the soil. So that's very important to be uh, to respect as much as possible uh, the vineyard. And this is what maybe sometimes we have forgotten that the la late, maybe in the 80s, 90s, and uh, I think we really now have to take care about that. Very important, preserving our planet. And this is why, you know, not only we believe in organic, biodynamic, we believe in geobiology, which is you know, the forces and the magnetic energy and the golden rule. We believe in bioclimatic building, which is minimizing, obviously, every energy possible and using the energy we presently have. We reduce, we reuse, we recycle, and we preserve nature. This is really the future, and this is the battle we have every day as a steward of the land and what we want to encourage others to do. Would you say Burgundy is becoming better on organic and budding farming now? Yeah, we have never been as much than now to do it. But we have to say things are much more difficult in Burgundy, going in biodynamics or organics. Because as I said earlier, we have plenty of humidity, plenty of rain. And when you have that, you encourage, you know, mildew, oidium, which are the strongest disease in the vineyard. So, if you want to do organic and biodynamics in Burgundy, that's very, very hard because you have to go a lot in the vineyard to protect, to protect your vine fruit with natural things, you know, and uh, like biodynamic preparations, you know. So you have to go a lot in the vineyard uh, to, 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 to succeed compared to the south of France where the sun is much more... Uh, there, where humidity is not there. So in Burgundy and Champagne, Alsace, are uh, three regions where it's very, very hard to, to be organic. But you know, I'm excited because we are doing it, which is very cool. So Gregory, I want to thank you so much for being with us today on Wine Styles. Congratulations for those two charismatic wines. You know, I could see the invisible winemaker still being very present, and I could feel your touch. So I cannot wait to see you soon physically. So one, we can go go-karting together. Two, we could play Texas Hold'em. And uh, three, we <laughs> can have a great meal and a fabulous time in the cellar. So yes. I wish you a wonderful time. Good preparation for the harvest and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank Cheers. you so much. Enjoy one. No moderation, please. <laughs>